Hello everyone, this is Hedgie. Uh, it's kind of a surprise stream. I'm not sure how many of you are going to show up for this because I've never done a morning stream before, but uh, you all know that I haven't been feeling well lately and I felt better this morning and I felt hungry and I decided I wanted to make breakfast. And so I decided I was going to make breakfast for everybody. Subtitle say my name is Hatchy. That's interesting. No, you're not going to dub me Hatchy from now on. Um, anyway, a little bit of background on this. I am going to be making uh, poached eggs on toast with a creamed tuna that goes with it. Hi there, Tom. How you doing? Um, I'm glad you could join us today. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on this, uh, I am going to tell you about my grandmother's recipe this is based on. Now she never combined this with eggs. Um, she used to make creamed salmon on toast as a dinner. And what she did is she got a 15 ounce can of uh, sockeye salmon and it had skin and bones in it too. And it was always a thing that what we did is she would open the can of tuna and put it into a bowl, or pardon me, not tuna, salmon, and put it into a bowl. And then you'd have to go through unrolling. Hey, da hey, Connor, how you doing? Welcome in. Um, you'd have to, with a fork, very carefully pick out the spine and any of the larger bones, and you'd have to get all the skin out, too, which was in there. And that was kind of a long and tedious process, but at the time, they didn't have uh, boneless tuna in a can, or boneless skin, uh, skinless salmon in a can. Uh, you can get it now, but um, in any case, uh, then she would take and um, she'd make a white sauce and put the salmon into it and add some very simple seasonings and we'd have that over toast one can would be stretched basically well thank you for the cheers Connor thank you very much I appreciate that thanks for the bits thanks for more bits <laughs> and um, That would feed four people, sometimes up to six, if she made a little bit more sauce. And we'd have it on toast with um, vegetables from the garden. We'd have a fresh, we'd have a fresh um, salad. We would have um, sliced tomatoes. Uh, we'd have, grandma had a wonderful garden and we just basically reaped the bounty of it all summer. But Creamed salmon on toast is one of my family's <laughs> and that's Pediakin. Pediakin. Thank you for uh, the follow. Um, yeah, Pediakin. Thank you for the follow. Um, we would basically reap the bounty of this all summer long and this is one of the comfort foods in our family that it just brings back so many memories of those days on the farm and having grandma and grandpa there. This was one of grandpa's, the, the creamed salmon was one of grandpa's favorite meals that she made. And these were never rich people. Um, you know, grandma had chickens, that's where we got our eggs. She had a garden that's where we got most of our vegetables we had cows out there and that's where we got our beef and uh, grandma and grandpa their whole life never owned a house they always rented because well grandpa didn't make very much money and grandma didn't work and so the meals were very tasty that she made but they weren't necessarily expensive or complicated so when my husband and I started out in Oregon, when we were first married, and hi, I know you can see me in the lid here. Um, <laughs> hey, Cece, welcome in. Uh, we 
We didn't have much money either. We were spending most of our money on living in a residence hotel. And it, uh, one of the first things that I, that I cooked when I, I worked long hours and Andrew stayed in the hotel with the dogs and, you know, made sure that everything was running right in the home. And, um, we got you know five dozen eggs and we're trying to figure out what to do with them and just eggs uh, didn't make a very good dinner so we got pretty creative in how we use them and it occurred to me I wanted they found a sale on at Costco of like five cans of skinless boneless salmon and I thought I'll make the creamed salmon on toast and then I thought that's probably not going to be enough protein for Andrew so I decided to add poached eggs onto it, thought it would go together because I like salmon eggs benedict. And uh, this is kind of an offshoot of that. Um. <laughs> no, throwing eggs at me was not an acceptable option, honey. Um, as you know, I threw mayonnaise back. So anyway, I am going to start. I substituted tuna for the salmon this time. And there's not really that big of a taste difference in this. Um, there's two different kinds of tuna you can use. You can use chunk light tuna, which is uh, pretty economical, but it is a stronger flavored tuna. And it, it's very, it, it tends to be more fishy. I like to get the, okay. uh, <laughs> thank you for the cheer. Um, we seem to be very delayed on the cheers. Anyway, uh, we like to get solid white albacore, which is a much milder uh, tuna. And it's very easy to, to put into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out making the white sauce. You want to make sure that you don't have the handle pointing towards you or you will kick everything off. So I've got my nice large uh, frying pan here and I am going to start uh, making a double batch. This is not yet up on the uh, Discord, but it will be. Um, normally this calls for one 12 ounce can um, and half a stick of butter, half a cup of flour. Uh, this is a double batch, so I've got two 12 ounce cans of solid white albacore and I'm going to use an entire stick of butter and to help that melt I am going to cut it up into a couple tablespoon bits and hope the dog shuts up because he's starting to yowl in the background um, and I will basically take and put these into the pan. What you need to do is melt them down so that you can make your roux for the uh, white sauce, also known as a bechamel. It is the base for many different sauces. Uh, cheese sauces are, are used as a bechamel and uh, basically anything white is going to be based on a bechamel. I am going to turn my heat on now to just medium. You don't want to scorch your, uh, fl your, your butter, and it's very easy to do that. I'm going to add a little bit of canola oil spray to this because that will add... No, it won't because it's empty. There we go. I am going to add a little bit of canola oil to it because that will help raise the burn uh, temperature of the butter. Ah, Mrs. Mrs. Mav is there too. Uh, hello, Mrs. Mav. And I'm not. I'm very happy to see that you're here, and uh, like to have both of you. Um, okay. So what I need to do is basically I need to um, melt the butter and. I will, while it's doing that, measure out some flour. My husband very helpfully gave me a completely full flour container that he refilled since the last time. Makes it a little heavy. 
but I would rather have flour than not. Woo! I just kicked flour all over myself. That was fun. I'm glad you guys can't see that. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Uh, Andrew's quite fond of it when I cook, too. So, okay. We have got flour all over the front there, too. All right. I've got a cup measured out, plus some. And I will put that away now. I am using a Farberware hot plate here, and it is a very nice hot plate. The two plates that it actually has on here are solid cast iron. Makes it very heavy, uh, makes it a little slow to heat up. Uh, but once it gets hot, the heat stays here, and it's a very, very even heat, which is nice for cooking. Um, the coil uh, hot plates do not work anywhere near as nice. Um, so I highly recommend this. And as usual, I also have a link for all of my equipment that I use on stream. I haven't added this pan yet to it, but... Uh, I do have links for all of my regular equipment on there, so if you want to get something that I use, you can follow the link to where I got it from, which is Amazon, basically. Um, and no, I don't get any money for, for giving that to them. Uh, it's just making it a little easier for you all to do what I do. Oh, look! We had somebody banned. I assume it was a bot. Um, my husband is even faster than I am with the ban button. Yeah, bot account, I figured. Uh, he is even faster than me with the ban button, and uh, that's a very comforting thing to have, to be a streamer and have your mod be that fast on the trigger. Okay, this is almost melted now. This is a Cuisinart a uh, hard anodized pan which has a large plate in the bottom of it and that heats up quickly and evenly as well again it is uh, very nice to have um, a high quality pan they aren't horrendously expensive the cephalon sets are extremely expensive they're very very good but they're extremely expensive the Cuisinart ones that I've got here are, as far as I can tell, just as nice a quality as my cousin's beautiful Cephalon set she got for her wedding. And uh, it was a lot cheaper. <laughs> um, and the pans are somewhere between $30 and $80, depending on which one you get, so it's not too bad. Oh, you got botted again today. Is that I, I heard you did a, had to do a lot of uh, banning yourself, unfortunately, while I was sleeping. So, sorry about that. But yeah, the, the bot bombs are coming through, and some of the bots are getting to be pretty darn clever. Um, they're not just naming them regular things. So I've got one stick of butter now and a little bit of oil in here. <laughs> 12 years marriage, 3 years sub. Well, thank you for the subscription, Andrew. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to uh, the Pigloo. And we've got links for everybody to follow to my Discord where you can find my equipment, you can find pictures of the food that I've cooked, you can find pictures. Uh, you can find the recipes of the food that I've cooked. Uh, I'm not going to take those down, so they'll always be there. And um, I also have a YouTube channel called Cooking with Hedge Pigs. And that is uh, my VODs on Twitch after Twitch takes them down. So you can also find my old... Uh, VODs there to look at if you need to. Now, this is one cup of flour with one cup of butter melted. 
And what you want to do is cook this for about five minutes uh, because you want to cook the taste of the flour out of the roux. Let's see. So can you ask what? What, what, what do you want to ask, Tom? I will say because Andrew resubscribed. Pink Pig shows up. Pink Pig. Pink Pig. And this is one of my little hedgy toys. And it's got a little pink tutu and a little pink bow. And she's just adorable. And doesn't she just look happy to be here? La, 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 la. Uh, so you want to cook this for roughly five minutes. It will go from being a sort of a paler color it will lighten briefly as it cooks and you'll see it starts to slightly bubble around the edges what does a pregnant wife like well I've never been pregnant so I wouldn't know that but I would think your pregnant wife would probably like this dish it's nice and mild and comforting and has lots of proteins in it and omega-3 fatty acids, which are good for everybody. And um, it's got a little bit of carbs and it's got calcium in it and tuna is a nice source of meat. Hey, Sarah. Welcome, uh, welcome in. I know I, su I surprised everybody by streaming at this time. I've been feeling so sick lately. I've just been feeling incredibly guilty. I haven't been streaming to anybody and uh, keep canceling my streams and putting them off. And this morning when I felt better and was actually feeling hungry and decided to make breakfast for the family, I decided that I might as well stream it. So... Yeah, it's never a surprise to Andrew. It's more of a, how would you feel about streaming today? And there's usually this big pause, and then he says, when? <laughs> because, as he said, he does have to set up all of my stream things. Um, I am disabled and can't carry things. I walk on crutches, um, fighting to stay walking. And uh, I can't carry things, so... Once I'm sat down like I am here at a folding table, um, I can actually cook. So that's good. Uh, anyway, at this point, you can see it is starting to turn nice and bubbly. And you want to look for that and give it another couple minutes. If you keep cooking this down, it will actually turn to a very dark brown, almost like chocolate. And that's a roux that you would want to base... Um, sauces like your gumbo sauces and uh, recipes like that. It's the same thing. You learn to make a roux. It's going to be based on so many other things. And gravies you can put in this and, and cheese sauces and just all kinds of things. If you want it thickened, a roux is the way you want to do it probably. So, um, and if you are lactose intolerant or allergic to dairy, uh, don't use butter, use margarine. Um, I prefer butter, but I'm not lactose intolerant, so, you know, give or take. And yes, I'm using flour in this, which has gluten in it. It's not keto-friendly, but you can use keto-friendly and gluten-free flours. Uh, you can use chickpea flour for this if you want to. Um, Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is add four cups of milk to this a little at a time. And as I have said repeatedly, you need to have uh, not cold, not hot, but warm milk. Because cold milk will hit this and it will um, make clumps. And you don't want to do that. If you use warmed milk, you don't get clumps. And you just add the warmed milk in. And then you whisk like a demon for, uh, well, until everything's combined. You've got the roux that you need to whip into this, and you will need to continually stir this because the thickening will start on the bottom and spread to the top, and you want to make sure that it doesn't stick or burn anywhere. Now, cooking this 
to the right consistency is important. Uh, now, white sauces range in thickness. You can have very, very thin sauces. You can have very, very thick sauces. It depends on what your purpose is. For this, we're going for a sauce that not only coats the back of the spoon, but is a little bit thicker. Um, if you've ever had a milkshake that you let melt so that it was very thin for a milkshake, uh, but still thicker than milk, that's about what we're going for. And that will take four to five minutes probably for it to reach that level. And the one thing you do not want to do is have your heat up high enough that this boils. Boiling milk can cause it to curdle, can cause it to split. You really don't want to do that. Uh, not for a white sauce. Mrs. Mav is starting to sick. Okay. Um, you mean she's getting sick right now, or is she just starting to get uh, morning sickness? If she has to leave, she has to leave until she feels better. That's totally fine. Um, I wish her well. Mac and cheese only. Okay. Um, you might want to consider if she can eat mac and cheese, maybe adding a little bit of some baked chicken to it to add a little bit more protein and... Um, it should be mild enough it wouldn't affect her and you said she loves chicken so uh, I make a really good macaroni and cheese with chicken in it and it's it's lovely um, just as a suggestion for something else she can eat but whatever she needs to eat is obviously what she needs to eat her body knows what she wants so yeah morning sickness that's one of those things I have never had to put up with. Instead, I've had all day sickness until we figured out that I wasn't making the enzymes to digest most of the food I was eating. Okay, this is going to make a white sauce and once it does, I am gonna be putting the tuna into it. And then I will be adding the strangest ingredient that's in this and that's ketchup. Um, it's not a lot of ketchup. It's only a couple teaspoons for this amount of milk. What it does is it turns the uh, sauce a very, very pale kind of pale beige pink, like a poached salmon would be. It adds a slight tomato taste to it, but you don't taste it and go, ooh, there's ketchup in this. It's not that much ketchup. Yeah, so we're going to, it's starting to get thicker now, and that's what we want it to do. And you just keep stirring constantly the whole time. Same thing if you were going to make a cream soup and you were heating it up. And uh, I will say once again, congratulations on your baby. And I just wish the best for you both. And I will try to make recipes occasionally that she will like to, ha to eat. Uh, so, as you can see, this is suddenly thickening up a lot, and that's what it has a tendency to do. As you can see, it's changing consistency here, so that if I were to lift it up, for instance, with my spoonchula, you can see it's actually a sauce now. And that's what we want it to be. So, I will take this off of my spoonchula and I will measure in. I have turned this down to low now. And it is really thickening up now. I am going to add a couple teaspoons of ketchup to this and you'll see it's not it's not much um, you put it in here and then you whisk it up 
and it just turns it sort of a pale pink and it is a beigey pink and it's a nice it's a nice amount to just barely flavor this um, so I'm gonna put the two 12 ounce cans of tuna in here now and they will break up as it's being stirred and at this point actually I don't need it on the heat anymore because the sauce is done the heat of the sauce itself will warm up the tuna and it will if this had been salmon instead it would warm up the salmon and I just need to make sure it breaks down and stir the sauce it's a nice thick creamy sauce it's got no cheese in it I'm gonna have to test it for salt and pepper and uh, make sure that I've got the seasoning correct for what it's supposed to be and becomes nice and thick and meaty with the fish and creamy with the sauce and there is it's not sweet, but there is that edge that is right there um, that you find in good seafood. It's a kind of a, they'll say that the seafood is sweet. It's not sweet like sugar, but it is a, a very pleasant taste. So I am going to taste this now. Although I don't actually have a spoon. I will use my spoonchula and see what the sauce tastes like. Mm, it's nice. We can tell there's fish in it. It has a very, very mild tuna flavor. It does need a little bit more ketchup. Not a lot. I am going to say maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. It also needs some salt and pepper. And again, you can tell this is not a lot of ketchup in here or it would be really red. And it's not. This is what I call a rosy cream sauce. And the reason why I call it that is is because it's just barely colored. I'm going to add perhaps a quarter teaspoon of salt to this. I tend to under season things a little bit because we're all watching our sodium because my mother is. So I've got some salt in this. You have a question. Okay. Hey, Nog, welcome in. Here in time to see. <laughs> I want to have a tiara. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of pepper to this. Not even an eighth, really. Andrew just pointed at me and said no. <laughs> so I have got this now nicely mixed up and it is a lumpy sauce once you get the fish in it and it's supposed to be so I will test this again for the seasoning see if I like it and I'll use a different part of the spoon yep that's good now it is a very pale pink color uh, more of a beigey pink and that's what it's supposed to be just that okay now I am gonna put the lid on this so it stays warm and move it off so that I can get out our poacher which we have pre-prepared for this and no I'm not making it by I am not making this by swirling the eggs around in water. I am using one of those egg poachers. I'll put the link up for it later, although we got it from Costco. Um, it is one of these that you see that it has water underneath and it has little cups in the top that you put the eggs in. And it works basically by steaming the eggs. They call them poached. They're not really poached. It's actually steamed. But it's a good, it's a good, uh, it is a very good um, thing for making eggs easily. This is non-stick, but I like to help the non-stick along by putting 
just a little bit of a spritz of uh, canola oil in it. And I picked canola for the reason that um, it doesn't really have much of a flavor. So it doesn't add anything to the uh, taste of the dish if you use the canola oil. My grandmother always, always used um, corn oil. And the corn, the corn oil added a flavor to everything she cooked it with. And it was a good flavor, but um, I don't always want to have the flavor of corn oil. And I would prefer that the food tastes like what the food tastes like. Um, so I use that. You can use olive oil if you want. If you want to add the flavor of olive oil to it, it's not bad. It, uh, extra virgin olive oil is a very lightly flavored uh, oil. Um, but you'll see me using canola unless I'm trying to add the flavor of olives to it. And I just hydrated myself there. Now, what I need to do is we started out with the water boiling here, but uh, that has stopped boiling by now. And I had it setting aside, but the water's still hot. And what I'm going to do is wait until this comes back to a steam, and then I am going to put... Uh, eggs in each pocket here and then you wait a few minutes and I'll show you uh, how you can tell at what point uh, your eggs are ready now you can with this you can make them hard steamed so basically it's the same thing as a uh, hard-boiled egg and you can make it so it's very very lightly done Kate's taking notes, okay. Uh, it usually only takes about three or four minutes to get them to an over medium point where all of the, you want to have the whites cooked, but you still want to have the, the yolk of it uh, creamy. And that is something, that's one of the things that I really, really like about this recipe. I like poached eggs on toast, and I love the creamed salmon or tuna on toast. When you add the eggs in, you're not only adding in more protein, you also are adding in that creamy, rich yumminess of the yolk. Hey, MPH, welcome in. Um, I am cooking um, basically creamed tuna. Uh, over poached or steamed eggs on toast and it's sort of a brunch for the family and so I'm heating up my egg poacher right now and it's a nice little six eggs poacher and I have made a white sauce seasoned it with a little salt and pepper and uh, two 12 ounce cans of solid albacore tuna uh, which is a nice mild tuna, much firmer than the chunk white, or pardon me, chunk light tuna. And it has a little bit of ketchup in it, which turns it into what I call a rosy cream sauce. It adds a slight taste of tomato to it, not a lot, because it is only a very pale pink color. It is a sort of a pink beige. Out of four cups of milk in the sauce, it's got about almost a tablespoon of ketchup. So that's not a lot. It just has a slight trace of sweetness to it with the tomatoes like you used a fresh ripe tomato. That's the difference between adding in like tomato paste to this. Um, the ketchup adds that slight sweetness that the tomato paste doesn't have. Um, and this is, it's low country cooking, I guess you'd call it. It's, it's um, my grandmother's farm cooking and it was always tasty food, but it usually wasn't expensive. So as you can see, I'm starting to get steam on the top here as the water is heating up. And as soon as it reaches a higher heat, I'm going to add the eggs in. And I have got lots of eggs. Andrew went out and bought me five dozen eggs. I don't know how many eggs he wants me to make, but I thought I'd make a dozen. So I'm going to 
get some of this out of the way. Um, I can also, if anybody wants to see it, 12 dozen eggs, uh, make 12 eggs, I'm sorry. Um, I'm out of practice. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've streamed regularly and I apologize for that. I wanted to, but I've just been terribly sick. Um, so with these poachers, you, d you wanna fill them up to just beneath the level of where the bottom of these cups are. You don't wanna fill it up higher than that because, uh, well, they'll bobble around and you'll get water everywhere and that's not what you're trying to do. What you're doing is you're steaming the eggs. see so I am going to get into my eggs I have here now and I need to cut that package open better and try not to dump the toast on the ground because that would upset my husband it would elate the dog, however. He would love to have a whole bunch of toast dumped on the floor for him to nom down on. But uh, he's not that lucky. <laughs> so, all right. I am going to start with the six eggs that we have in here. So. steaming now we're not quite at a boil which is a good time to put the eggs in so you take the eggs and put them in here and keep going till you have filled all the little body cavities And these are uh, just large eggs. They're not extra large or extra, extra large. So they come up to just slightly under the edge of the cup. And the jumbo eggs, if you get those, or the extra, extra large eggs, will completely fill the cups. Um, and when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your eggs are um, not strange color, don't have anything weird about them. If they do, quickly dump the egg out, wash the container out, and start again. Uh, you don't want to have bad eggs. And as you can see, the eggs are already starting to go a little white. Um, they're starting to steam, basically. And I don't pre-season the eggs until I serve them. Um, it really doesn't add anything to it when you're talking about poaching eggs. So I've got these in here now. It has all these little holes here that let the steam through. And the bottoms of this are very close to where the water is. So now you just cover it up here. And you keep an eye on this probably about four minutes for steaming it. <laughs> Your wife is gorgeous. Tom, she is absolutely beautiful. Um, and sure, she can cook like this. She just needs the recipes, that's all. So you have often bragged about what a good cook your wife is, and um, I believe you. <laughs> There's not a lot that woman can't do. So I am making um, steamed eggs on toast with a... Um, creamed tuna with a little bit of ketchup in it. Um, this is what I was saying that it's, it, this is the rosy uh, cream sauce I was talking about. It's four cups of milk with a tablespoon of ketchup in it and it is just a slight taste of tomato to it and it has a slight hint of the sweetness like if you had a vine ripened Try it, try it, David, trust me. The cream tuna is to put over the top of the poached eggs. It's kind of like making, um, with this, the poached eggs on toast with the cream fish sauce over it is a lot like um, a salmon um, eggs benedict. 
No, it's like Sam and Eggs Benedict, except instead of a um, which over here in Seattle, they take uh, they take your your um, what do they call those English muffins, and they toast those. Then they put a poached egg on it, and they put on a slice of tomato and some smoked salmon and your egg, and then they put the hollandaise sauce over the top. This is quite a bit like that, except it's not a hollandaise sauce. There's no lemon taste to it. Hi, kitten. Thank you for joining us. I'm really glad you're here. Uh, I am making steamed eggs, which are what some people would call poached, and it's going to go on toast with a creamed tuna. Normally this would be salmon, but uh, I couldn't find any salmon at a reasonable price. And now you can see in here that the eggs have turned white. However, if you touch this, you can see, and you, you won't be able to see it here, but if I jiggle it, the eggs are still very, very jiggly. That means that at this point, the whites are not cooked yet. And it's very important that you cook the whites. At this point, they would be not even considered uh, an over easy egg it would be um, less than that because even eggs over easy have all of the white solid it, they have to be cooked it's just nasty if you don't um, so I am going to be steaming these eggs for another couple minutes and when I do when they're done they will be put on to a beautiful plate and I will be putting toast on it, and I will be putting, um, where did that go? I have a wet plate here. Um, I'll be putting a sauce over the top of it, and then I will cut it open so that you can see it, and the egg yolk runs out into the sauce and just adds all that lovely, rich, creamy egginess. So, no. Um, this is an adaptation of a recipe my grandmother used to make. She would make creamed salmon on toast and combine it with the breakfast food. Um, living out here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of seafood-based things, even if you're talking about for breakfast. So salmon eggs benedict is something that we have here um, in most restaurants that serve eggs benedict. And it's used... Um, with smoked salmon. Um, all right, it doesn't take very long for these things to cook. So the next thing you want to do is give it a little bit of a jiggle. And at this point, the whites are cooked through. So they have just got to the point where the eggs will be uh, runny in the middle and they will be um, solid in the whites and I need to get out some more paper towel because those little handle things are hot. So I am going to take and since this is for my husband I'm going to give him three eggs and you take them out of their little cups and you can't see this but you take them out of their little cups and I have layered two pieces of toast here. <gasps> Ouch that's really getting hot. Um, and it will just flip out onto the toast and then you can put it back in here and it's hot because this is made of metal and that was boiling so we will want to take three of these eggs into one I have flipped that and now it won't lift up. Okay, come on. There it released. Ouch. Yes, yes, I burned myself. And we used to have this for dinner quite a bit uh, when we were out on our own. So we would put three eggs on the toast, arrayed over it, 
and then I would take oh that's heavy the cream sauce that I've made and I'm gonna put this now onto our other pad and I have the tuna cream sauce here that I will take now and because my husband likes HP sauce I'm going to add some HP sauce to his uh, eggs I wouldn't normally do this because I think the ketchup is enough HP sauce is an English product they call it brown sauce and it is basically a seasoned sauce made with uh, vinegar and molasses and some uh, tamarind so it's kind of a sweet tangy sauce and so I put that underneath the sauce here which you can't see me do because that's off camera so I kind of splatted it on his eggs and then I take and stir the sauce up which is nice and lumpy with fish because that's two 12 ounce containers and you just ladle the sauce over the top like so and it's got nice big chunks of meat in it and it usually comes very close to flowing off of the plate and I will then take a little bit of parsley because it makes it pretty and sprinkle it lightly on top And here is my husband's tray of food. Once again, you really can't see much of it. That's two pieces of toast. It is uh, three eggs. And I am going to take a quick picture of this or make him do it. Yeah, I'm going to make you do it, honey. Take it and hopefully put it somewhere it doesn't show anything and then he can bring back a fork for me when I make the second thing of food and I have two more pieces of toast here that I am going to put on the plate and I face them up here so that they're facing each other and I am going to get more of the eggs and they will flip out onto the tray. And then I'll put on more eggs to cook since I'm cooking for the entire family. And um, this works really well as leftovers too. Uh, the sauce, you just make more toast, heat this up in the microwave, put it over the top and it makes a lovely snack or a dinner. I mean, my grandmother always served this for dinner, not for breakfast, and she never did the egg thing. I don't think it occurred to her. Um, but, come on, get out of there. All right. And, I have now got three eggs arrayed across another plate. And because I like to have a little extra salt, because these have no salt on it at all, I'm going to grind just a slight bit of salt on it and put my put my sauce here, which has already heated up. Because as I said, these hot plates are um, solid and they they keep their heat a long time and this is about a half a cup measure i probably put three quarters of a cup of this sauce on a serving and it's got nice big chunks of salmon in it and it has once again a very pretty appearance here i am going to add some pepper to the top of mine because i do like pepper and my husband doesn't so i didn't pepper his and he can type in what his opinion of this is. I know he likes it, but he can tell you what he thinks it tastes like. 
And once again, put a little bit of parsley over the top for the pretty. And here we have this lovely plate of creamed salmon, pardon me, creamed tuna on toast with eggs. And I am going to now, in front of you, uh, move that to the side, some other things to the side, and I am going to cut across this here so that you can see the yolk will run out and join the, the fish on toast so that you can see this. It has a nice little bit of egg yolk running out there and the <laughs> Mix as well with the eggs and tuna. Well, HP sauce does do wonderful things with eggs. So I am going to take a taste of this now. And it is albacore tuna, a white sauce with a little bit of ketchup in it that just turns it slightly pink. It would be the color of the canned tuna. Um, pardon me, salmon if I had used salmon. And I will take a bite. Oh, that is so good. The sauce, you can taste the seafood in it, so you can taste the tuna, but because I used albacore instead of chunk light, it's a very mild tuna flavor. And the, it is very creamy and rich, and you can taste a slight hint of the tomato in it, which combines very well with this. It's rather like combining a red sauce and a bechamel together. Um, the egg itself is tender, and the yolk combines with the sauce to give it an extra bit of creamy richness. And it is just lovely. So this is this is my creamed tuna on toast with eggs. And I will give you another look at this. I know I'm off camera again. Uh, I've got a goal up there to get more equipment so I can have a second camera and a second mount for it. I am going to add some more of the sauce over the top of the egg because the egg is kind of naked at the moment on that piece of toast. And what you get here, I'm trying to make this look pretty on the plate and on the fork, but it's just not cooperating with me. Okay. So as you see here, we have got the egg and the yolk and the sauce and the bread underneath it and it combines into a really lovely bite because the bread is still crisp and we don't butter the bread by the way it's just plain toasted mm. that is so so good so sometime if you want a quick brunch or a quick dinner you can take and make creamed salmon on toast. The difference would be you use canned salmon in the place of the tuna. Or if salmon's not really your thing, or if you can't afford it because it gets pretty expensive. Instead, try the, try the albacore. You can get a 12 ounce can for about $3 a can. That's not too bad. And you make a simple white sauce and you add a little bit of ketchup to it, a little bit of salt and pepper and poach some eggs or fry some eggs, put them on your toast and ladle the sauce over the top and it is just an amazing tasty dish. So I will have the recipe put up shortly after stream here and I will be back streaming tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to stream. It depends on what my stomach will tolerate. My stomach always tolerates fish, so it may be fish. 
Uh, yes, that was a bechamel base. Um, so I took a stick of butter and a cup of flour and melted them, combined them together, added in four cups of warm milk. I don't ever put cold milk in because I find it lumps. And my grandma told me, always use warmed milk. And then you just let it cook for about four minutes. Do not ever let it boil. You will split your sauce. It will taste nasty. Um, so you keep it at a low heat, a medium, about a medium heat would work and you let it get thick enough so that it is about the consistency of a melting uh, a melting uh, milkshake and then you add in your tuna or salmon uh, you could use halibut if you like halibut and then you add in uh, a tablespoon of ketchup to get make it just slightest taste of tomato with it and I use a hot roux and warm liquid so yeah and then you just let that heat up and you put your poached or fried eggs you could even use scrambled that would taste good too but you lose the effect of the yolk and this tastes quite a bit like the uh, seafood eggs Benedict that they serve out here in the Seattle area so give it a try people you won't regret it it is just a lovely economical comforting dish it's warm it's soothing try the ketchup I'm telling you David just try it it doesn't it doesn't taste like ketchup <laughs> give it a go if you really have to after you try making it with ketchup you can use tomato paste instead but yes trust the hedgie uh, I know you and ketchup but give it a shot I choose the ketchup over t uh, tomato paste because the ketchup has that sweetness to it that um, has the same sweetness that a vine ripened tomato has it's that same level of sweetness added to it so it's not it's not a heavy amount of tomato in here and you don't say oh that's got ketchup in it it doesn't taste like that Anyway, I thank you all for coming, especially on No Notice, surprise, and I will see you guys again tomorrow. You will see me in stream. Now let's go see who we can raid. I see, huh, Chef Jean Reed, he is uh, out there. Um... Tilly is doing Meatless Monday with Japanese curry and squash. Let's raid Tilly. She is a wonderful food streamer. She cooks four days a week on stream and she plays games. And it's just a wonderful, um, wonderful, wonderful person. And she's very interesting. She does check out. Yeah, you think I, I didn't really... I did see Mrs. Ruby too, but um, yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna do it to the other chef, Tilly. And she's a nice home cook that pretty much taught herself to cook on stream. Anyway, so we're wrapping up. Thank you again for coming, and I will see you guys tomorrow night. Uh, thank you for my new followers, and from my house to yours. So we'll see you tomorrow. Love you all. Bye-bye.